Good evening, everyone. You are uh, watching News X's special series, Second Wave Superheroes, where uh, we recognize individuals and organizations for their selfless service during a devastating second wave of uh, the pandemic. Our first guest, uh, Geeta Priyayar, is a social activist and writer, followed by student and activist Anis Sara, and last but not the least, Dr. Garma Patania, co founder of Your Wellness Crafters. Listen in. As COVID cases were going beyond control, Geetha Priya and her team collaborated with COVID task forces across India. They gathered information on availability of beds, oxygen cylinders and medicines. They ferried patients to hospitals, got their tests done and even helped with cremations. Newsx proudly recognizes second wave superhero Geetha Priya Ayer. Hello and welcome. You're watching Newsx Second Wave Superheroes. I am Ajasti Chahan and today I'm joined with Geetha Priya Ayer, who's a volunteer and she did COVID relief work during the second wave of coronavirus. Welcome to the show, Geetha Priya. Hi, thank you, Ajasti. Uh, please start by telling our viewers that how exactly were you able to help people. Okay, um, before I begin, I would like to thank few people. But first of all, I would like to thank uh, News X for having me here and giving me a chance to speak upon uh, this. Second is my team. I extend my gratitude to my team, which consists of uh, Hemant, uh, Siddhant, uh, Swati, Rajat, Sharti, and the list is endless. So let me stick to this. Uh, and also uh, my uh, thank you to my husband and children who were supportive during my uh, during this uh, you know uh, COVID relief uh, support that I was extending to people. So uh, your question was about how did I start? Am I right? Yes. Well, uh, it's I, uh, I saw the apathy, like, you know, uh, there was a lot of people who were getting infected and there was shortage of beds uh, and uh, oxygen and all that. People were trying to reach out to resources and they were not able to find resources. So I just thought, uh, you know, what can I do for them being an individual? So I just announced, uh, I just formed a small WhatsApp group of my friends and, uh, you know, connections. And I said, uh, this is what is the need of the hour. And we can uh, uh, take uh, take care of our business later, but uh, let's, you know, get into this right away. So that's how it started. Uh, you know, we started providing uh, contacts and resources for beds, oxygen, and uh, plasma and all that. Okay, so uh, also I would like to ask you, were there any incidents, uh, any emotional incidents that moved you because you were in direct contact with some patients and their families and as well? Cases that came to me were a uh, personal, you know, it felt like it's a personal case. It's some yeah. my own case. However, uh, there was one uh, daughter, she was looking out for an ICU bed for her father who was 70 uh, plus and uh, and she sent me uh, that he's so helpless his oxygen levels are dropping down and uh, she sent me his pictures so i was moved by watching his pictures because uh, my father is of same age and uh, i did not see him as any you know third person i saw him as my own father and uh, and i said no i am getting on to this right away and i will not sit back until uh, this uncle gets a bed. So, you know, it, it, it felt as if I'm his own uh, daughter. And uh, I stopped only when, once the bed was confirmed and they reached the hospital. That's, that's really some great work. Uh, I would also like you to answer that in your opinion, uh, what could have authorities done better or what could we as individuals have done better during this second wave? 
first of all i think uh, we missed on uh, second wave coming in uh, right. we were uh, much uh, you know we were much better in terms of handling wave one however we did not see a uh, second wave coming in so there was this apathy of you know i feel uh, we should have been prepared with uh, health infrastructure uh the oxygen plasma blood and everything we should have been you know should have been leveled up yes but we missed on that and uh, this uh, and secondly um i would also say that uh, tests uh, there have been cases where people uh, these uh, diagnostics were not coming home and taking tests so there ample tests were you know um, what do i say uh, ample diagnostic centers were also needed along with the health yeah. infra, uh, the hospitals beds and and i also feel that a government uh, could have converted these government hospitals and schools into covid infrastructure for the time being uh, until we handle these uh, you know this crisis so that is right. one part which um, which went you know which was completely mismanaged by authorities and secondly i also hold uh, everyone uh, we citizens as uh, you know as responsible when there is a protocol that has to be maintained during covid crisis we certainly have to maintain we cannot be you know lose on those so i have seen places where people were gathering in numbers and uh, uh, you know then uh, holding see there there are two things uh, two uh, things one is uh, uh, even if someone is you know uh, not adhering to the rules at least you are responsible right you as a person is responsible you are an adult yes so just because i am going to certain place need not uh, you need not come with me and uh, then you don't say that just because of me you got covid absolutely absolutely so there is a blame game that has to be stopped we all are equally responsible for, for this whatever has happened we each of us are equally responsible let's take it up exactly till you love the hour So thanks for talking to us and thanks for all the good work that we've been doing for the society. Thanks, thanks again. Anil Sara is a social activist and an economics student in Ethiopia's College for Women. She ventured into activism in 2017 by visiting old age and kids' homes and provided provision items to them. As the pandemic hit India in 2020, she, along with other volunteers, gave about 2,000 kgs of rice to people in need. She volunteered to find leads for beds, food, oxygen suppliers, and more. Anis is also helping people who lost their jobs during this period by providing relevant leads. Newsx proudly recognizes second wave superhero Anis Sara. Welcome to our special show, Second Wave Superheroes. I am Priyanka Sharma, and joining me today on the broadcast is Anis Sara. Anis, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Tell us how you help people amid the second wave. Ah, uh, is nice question actually. Ah, uh, we are a bunch of group people volunteers there, and uh, we are working for. Uh, Uh, regarding a covid people who need a bed who need a food who need oxygen all that so almost uh, we are a lot and lot of volunteers from other districts so so we are the bunch of volunteers and uh, this is the way we are going to help the people in this second uh, covid war way yeah what motivated you to take up this responsibility what motivate appreciation from the other people is motivated me for because if help one person they are giving appreciation applause to us so that's my medicine to motivate this thing to more in the future and their applause is motivates me to do more in the future so that's the thing 
were there any incidents while helping people that moved you emotionally yes of course uh, i think i almost done uh, 50% uh, 50 Uh, people uh, in this covid uh, second wave they all got a bed all that so one girl from uh, ainavaram i think so her mom was affected by covid and she need uh, help uh, ask her me to help her bed so within one hour we uh, helped him, uh, her for the bed fa- facility so after her mother discharge he remember me and he called me to say that my mom is very well and thank you so much for your help and uh, we will now uh, surely we will meet in a future and uh, all that so this one is the so emotional to me but others uh, lord is there actually but i can't tell everything so clearly yeah but this one is a major one looking at how the situation got worse during second wave what are your expectations from the authorities especially when there are warnings that there is going to be a third wave sorry ma'am i can't hear you what are your expectations from the authorities expectation from the authorities expectation from authorities they should uh, work sincerely and uh, there is it's not any kind of a uh, you know uh, normal works at all they put full concentrate on it and there is a many one lives is there so i surely uh, kindly request to people who is are uh, working please concentrate on the work because if if you got any lead we should verify it it's verified or non verified all that because it is any fake i fake things people will hurt of it so concentrate it's truly important to their work so that's my main authorities so anis you are 20 year old and uh, you yeah. have been helping people amid the second wave uh, sometimes mm-hmm. helping people requires long working hours uh, a lot of times when there is a shortage of beds medicines and other services it takes a toll on your mental health how do you maintain a balance between work life and also helping people how do you maintain that Actually, mental health balance i I, i i to be frank i'm really very happy to work with the, this incidents because it's not for us it's all for whole society so i'm really very happy to work with that if i am sitting simply my thought will be like okay this one is uh, we can uh, search for other things we can do this things and i usually used to go old age homes and kids homes all the homes and i planning that i'm collecting uh, uh, provision items and i send it to uh, those who need it in this covid second wave and previous year that is 2020 we provided 2000 kgs rice to the old age homes and kids homes all that so whenever i feel mentally depressed all that i'm straightly go with the old age homes and take spending some time with them all that but i never mean it that i'm stressed in that period and i, I surely telling that service is uh, you know uh, service to the man is service to the god vegananda says it that so i hopefully i agree with that sentence because mm-hmm. i never bo- getting bored of doing this all so yeah i'm only girl who always naughty who always so cool as and who always you know I never gone lazy for doing a works for my society. That's super sweet, and that's a wrap from our end. Thank you so much for joining us on the show, and all the yes, best. Yes, thank you so much. Keep helping people. Keep spreading that. Positive. Surely, surely, and the same way you are people picking uh, <laughs> members, volunteering, and showing to the society is very grateful help. And there is a many one is there from outside who are all sacrificing their own families, child, children, studies only for the society and working a lot and lot of things. So please pick there and show it to the society. And thank you so so much for uh, giving this opportunity. And uh, this, and this is my first ever interview that I. <laughs> you know get beat so thanks a lot and this time i would like to uh, thank to my parents uh, who are all you know supporting system for me and my family friends and volunteers all all of them and lastly but uh, all prices due to god so i i would like to thank all of my society all of my friends all of my families all 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 thank you ani thank you
earlier this year we witnessed the most unfathomable horrifying period that brought down the entire humanity to their knees the second wave of covid spared very little the sanity of healthcare workers despite working at the hospital for maddening hours dr garima felt that there were salvageable lives ending due to lack of oxygen unavailability of beds and drugs so she volunteered for free teleconsults receiving a zillion calls a day for beds drugs and oxygen they would call up hospitals and ask for bed availability sometimes create beds at their own parent institutes for salvageable patients news ex proudly recognizes second wave superhero Dr. Garima Pathania. Hello and welcome. You are watching News X, and I am Fiza Jain. Today, on the Second Wave Superheroes, we have with us Dr. Garima Pathania, who is a co-founder of Your Wellness Crafters, and was also an earlier resident pediatrician at Sabdajang Hospital. She has been helping with SOS calls for hospital beds in Delhi and NCR, and she also ran a mental health session and online sessions. Uh, hello, ma'am, and welcome to you on the show. Um, ma'am, my uh, first question to you is: What really led to you? Like, how? What motivated you to help people during these COVID times with the beds and everything? Well, hi, Fiza. Firstly, thank you for having me. Uh, I think as a doctor. this pandemic has uh, gotten a lot of helplessness for all of us so no matter how much work you're doing within the premise of the hospital you always come back home and are bombarded with like a zillion calls about people not getting beds and oxygen and just basic facilities that could actually save lives so i think just not just the feeling that you know we're not doing enough probably led a lot of doctors to also um, entertain these calls and try and just run helter skelter and arrange for resources in whatever way possible so i think it's not just me but a lot of doctors and i think people from across the uh, professions have come together uh, in the pandemic just because of this crunch of resources right so ma'am how has your journey been helping people getting their beds and like answering all the sos calls how has it been how has it affected you people around you or probably your mental health right so uh, fiza a lot of uh, times uh, we were able to provide help to people and uh, it it's been uh, so overwhelming as an experience that sometimes you know you've just arranged a bed or you've just arranged something for a patient and within 2 to 3 hours you're getting a text that you know the patient is no more so i i think uh, just the magnitude of what is happening i think none of us had anticipated it and uh, it has led to uh, quite a bit of a deterioration in our mental health as well i do have these uh, random breakdowns here and there because of this sheer helplessness that we have felt uh, so uh, yes i think uh, the uh, most of the experience i would say 80% of the experience has been very very good right you know we've uh, it, it's been very satisfying to being uh, you know to have been able to help somebody outside of my profession and probably you know uh, in an administrative or whatever way but uh, these uh, even even like one uh, a phone call uh, uh, and you know uh, informing you of a death or demise of somebody who you think uh, could have been saved is uh, is like a punch in the gut so i think uh, that way uh, the mental health of a lot of healthcare workers has gotten affected really badly yeah like all like i have heard that a lot of doctors have had these emotional breakdowns and all of these things have been really crazy for them how have you been like how have you been reaching out to people like how do you get to know about these sos do people contact you directly do you get to know through the social media handles and all these things right so uh, you know uh, we have been running a couple of uh, volunteer groups um, whether it is with the local ngos or you know just just kind of distributing your numbers for sos spaces so most of these calls are random some of these calls are through social media some of these calls are through the ngo uh, so uh, i think uh, it's been a multi 
multi-dimensional sort of a route, right? People have been approaching here from everywhere. But um, uh, as I was telling you, you know, the mental health of a lot of us has gotten affected so badly because of the sheer volume of uh, calls and these distress calls that you get. And uh, it's not always possible to help everybody, right? So, uh, yes, so, yes, so where is media? Um, a lot of NGOs, uh, there is this NGO called Every Infant Matters mm -hmm. that is run by Dr. Radhika Batra. And she's doing a phenomenal job. She got a she got a couple of doctors on this platform, on a common shared platform, uh, to sort of try and help and mitigate resources and provide um, uh, SOS uh, online consultations pro bono. So, is it like you've been trying to focus on people who are like not really digitally that active, or who really are not there on any social media platform? How have you been helping them? Uh, well, Fiza, I think uh, just I think the kind of people that have reached out to us have been from all uh, sections of the society, right? There are serving soldiers who are not being able to admit their fathers. There are this there's this huge poor section of society that's not being able to afford oxygen cylinders. So I think uh, this pandemic has not uh, been picky in terms of the misery that it's caused. I think right from the affluent. To the downtrodden, I think everybody has been hit very, very badly. It's it's been, it's been so difficult for uh, a couple of my doctor colleagues to get a bed in their own hospital. So uh, you know, it's uh, I don't think that it has spared any uh, population, and I think the distress calls have been um, from all sections of society. Indeed, like it's really has taken a toll on every person, and I feel that helping out each and every person in any single way really helps a lot and whatever you've been doing is phenomenal and is amazing job because like getting a bed is was till now really a major task for people people were really panicking on it and indeed like helping people that way you have really done an amazing job and we really want to credit you and give you the right amount of uh, respect for that. And thank you so, so much for joining us. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.